Hello and welcome back to episode 18 of Afterglow. Uh, today we're going to be talking about another role-playing game on the PlayStation 1. There's actually a bunch of these I want to talk about, but I'm trying not to go through them all at once, just trickle them in every once in a while. But uh, this one, I feel like it, it's a really good game, but the story overrides the game. And uh, it's also definitely a product of its time, and you'll be able to tell that whenever you listen to the music tracks I selected for the show. But, uh, like I said, it's very, very Japanese-y, uh, and it's uh, really, really big on the uh, love story storyline. So it's not exactly for everyone. If you can't handle a love story, then it, it's not for you. Uh, that being said... Uh, in my opinion, it's got a fantastic story. It's also got fantastic music, even though uh, it does feel cheesy, I will admit. A lot of the songs definitely have that cheese factor to it. But uh, to me, it's kind of like a combination of a product of its time and a way to kind of get you into that story, if that makes any sense. But uh, we're going to experience the intro to the game now, and then after that we will talk about Lunar, the Silver Star Story Complete, on PlayStation 1. So let's talk about Lunar. Uh, this game originally came out on the Sega CD, and uh, I didn't know. <laughs> Never really owned the Sega CD until I started collecting games. But uh, going off that, have you guys ever walked in the store and bought a game solely based off of the box artwork and what it looked like? Uh, that was me. <laughs> I happened to be in Walmart. I want to say I was 17, maybe. And uh, saw this big box uh, PlayStation 1 game. Uh, and the box was really big for a PlayStation 1 game, right? Uh, checked out the back and saw it was an RPG. And uh, yeah, had to buy it. <laughs> so I ended up with the uh, Collector's Edition of Lunar, which came with the game. It also came with a uh, soundtrack CD. Uh, they were really pushing the music hard, obviously. Uh, came with a really nice cloth map of the game world. It also came with a uh, hardcover uh, manual and guide for like the first uh, small section of the game. Really, really nice looking. Had like a leather looking look. Had a nice cloth uh, bookmark that would go in there too. I, it was very, very slick looking. But uh, I really, really enjoyed playing this game. 
There is a caveat, though, which is, yeah, it is a role-playing game, but uh, whenever I was a kid, I did have some difficulty because I overthought it a lot. The trick to this game is pretty simple. You don't have to do a lot of grinding. Just every time you get a boss fight, uh, your main character, Alex, have me sword dance. If you're out of MP, have another character give him uh, HP. Make sure you load him up with MP rest restoration items. Uh, have him restore his MP. Have your other characters keep him and the rest of the party healed. And just use sword dance repeatedly. It's really a shame, because this tactic works for pretty well every boss in the game. Like, if you have one that stomps you, if you're using that method, then you go back and you grind a little bit, and you come back and use the same tactic. <laughs> but uh, it, it's really a shame, because the story is so good. Uh, the storyline, more or less, you are trying to... Uh, Go be a hero. <laughs> uh, you're following in the footsteps of another person that had the title of Dragon Master. And you, you eventually get this title too. But during this whole uh, grand adventure that you go on, uh, you find a guy that's attempting to take over the world, of course. Uh, but originally you think that he's on your side. He ends up betraying you. Uh, in the meantime, you do accumulate some party members that kind of move in and out. Uh, the game kind of messes with you a little bit at first, because you get a character, I won't spoil it, but she's a really good healer. And she's with you for a good two to three hours of the game. And then she's gone, and you never get her back in your party. <laughs> But, uh, like I said, the game is absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, I've only played through it twice. Once whenever I was a kid. I think I actually cheated my way through with a game shark because I got frustrated because I kept overthinking the boss battles rather than using the sword dance and MP technique. But I recently played through it again, emulating it on a Raspberry Pi and uh, beat it using the sword dance technique. The game has been... Uh, kind of, sort of, remade numerous times. I believe the uh, PlayStation, or not the PlayStation, the PS1 version is the best of all of them, though. There was a PSP version, but if I recall right, the PSP version kind of eliminated world map travel to where you just pointed at an icon on the map and you'd automatically go there. And to a degree, that's fine, because Lunar doesn't really have uh, overworld battles. But on the other hand, I'm the type of guy I like kind of walking through the overworld and exploring the area. So I thought it was a real shame if they took that out. Uh, there was also a Game Boy Advance release, which, I mean, that one apparently wasn't so hot. I didn't play it. Uh, of course, like I mentioned earlier, there's a Sega CD version. I have dabbled with it. Uh, the audio is a little different in that one. I can't see much about, but it did have a different intro scene. Uh, the game itself was very similar. The uh, FMVs, though, and the uh, Sega CD version, they're almost like stills with small sections that I'll move every once in a while. Whereas the PlayStation 1 had these beautiful, beautiful full-motion videos. And... Uh, it, it looks like you're watching like a modern day cartoon with these FMVs that are on the PlayStation version. And of course, the Game Boy Advance couldn't do that, so they weren't there, which is, again, a real shame because these FMVs were awesome looking. So if you're going to replay this game, I highly recommend to go back to that original PlayStation 1 version and play it because it's easily the way to play this game. However, again, if you're going back to play this game, Play this game if you want to and experience an awesome story that is told perfectly. Um, if you're looking for a pure gameplay experience, this might be the RPG to skip. You're not going to get the depth out of even your 16-bit RPGs like Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy VI. Uh, this game does not have the depth of those Super Nintendo RPGs. I mean, to be honest, I don't think this game has the depth of even Super Mario RPG. Like your uh, equipment, honestly, you find a new store, you equip and your new weapons or a new piece of armor to get better stats. There's not a whole lot of thinking behind it. Uh, the one thing, though, with equipment, bringing that up in items, is that each character's inventory is very, very limited, other than uh, 
You got a little miniature cat dragon that's with your party, and he can hold as much as you give him. But the rest of your party is limited to only a few items. So you kind of got to manage your items to a degree until you figure out, okay, uh, Alex gets all the MP restoration for the most part, and your other party members just focus on extra damage and keeping him healed up. <laughs> but I do really like this game. Just the big caveat of if you want a really good story, play this game. If you're looking for deep combat mechanics, this might be one to skip. But that's it for this episode of Afterglow. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode after the outro, which is going to be... Some people are going to think it's another cheesy song, but again, the way it's animated and the way she sings it is absolutely beautiful. This is a Luna's Boat song. We'll see you in the next episode. Stop.